So, we've all heard that if you're a video editor, you need to have a video card. I mean, it's in the name, video, video, ah. And we've all seen plenty of videos showing that for rendering, having a GPU versus just CPU encoding is a huge difference. It's night and day. But what about a low-end versus high-end GPU? I mean, do you really need a beefy GPU or just should you just slap something in and call it a day? Well, let's find out, shall we? So what prompted me to make this video is my need for a better GPU. Spoiler alert, yes, sometimes beefier GPUs are needed for video editing. I've, for the longest time, had a GTX 950, and I've been editing 4K video on that 950, and I've run into some issues that I'm going to talk about in time in this video. And I recently got a 1070 Ti to solve these problems. I know, way, way beefier. Now to put it in perspective, the 950, at the time I got it, it was a brand new card back then, cost me $160, and now is probably worth $80 to $120, depending where you find it. I'd say around the $100-ish mark. And the 1070 Ti, I just got for $480, and now, depending on prices, because it's fluctuating constantly, between $400 and $500 is probably where you'll find that. That's quite a big difference, and is it really worth it? Let's start with rendering, because that's kind of always the example to show the differences in performance for video editing. So I had a 1080p timeline in Premiere Pro, the personal rig update number three video that I tried exporting, 4K in Premiere Pro, that's the LG G5 eight months later, and a 4K timeline in DaVinci Resolve, that's the number representation video. So if you wanna see kind of get an idea of what kind of effects and stuff are used in those videos, you can go check those out. So, 1080p, 950 versus 1070 Ti, let's go! Wow, that is, that's not worth the three to 400 price premium, is it? What about DaVinci Resolve at 4K? Maybe that'll show more of a difference. Nope, no, that's, I mean, it's it's better, but it's, it's still, no, no, that's, it's not really worth it still. What about 4K Premiere Pro? Ah, this is where things get interesting. When I was first making that video, that LG G5 video, I had to borrow my friend's 980 just to export it because every time I tried exporting on my 950, at some different part in the video, it would just quit and say, sorry, ran out of VRAM. The measly two gigs on the 950 just weren't enough. That's one of the reasons I got a 1070 Ti, I mean, partially because it was a good deal compared to a 1070 at the time, and I wanted something with 8 gigs of VRAM to make sure that I never ran out. The 980 with 4 gigs that I had to borrow from my friend to export the video had 4 gigs, and that was barely enough. So here is one of the instances where a beefier GPU might be better, because it has enough VRAM to be able to handle the workload that's being thrown at it. And that's not the only reason someone would want a beefier GPU. Playback is much better on the 1070 compared to the 950. And I even just now upgraded to a 4K monitor. Let me know if you want a review of that, some LG one that I got for 300 bucks. Pretty nice, actually. I was not going to be able to push out that many pixels with the 950 with gaming or video playback. So let's actually take a look at how video playback is affected by the different GPUs on those, t on those three timelines that are exported. So we're here on a 1080p timeline with the GTX 950. So at 1080p, we set it to full resolution. Just regular playback of the A-roll is no problem. I can even add text and stuff, no problem. And you can actually see right here, once that little green dot turns yellow, that's when frames are starting to drop, stuttering is starting to occur. Now, the problem I often encountered is this. I don't know how well you can see it, but this is extremely stuttery. I'm dropping so many frames here on just a simple 1080p time lapse. Because while the 950 can handle 1080p fine, honestly, it's once you start trying to chug out hundreds or even thousands of frames per second, it, it, it really doesn't like it. 
it, it's fine at first, but it really starts to stutter eventually, and you get this kind of stop motion animation kind of look. Now, still on the 950, if we bring in a 4K timeline, this time a half resolution, you can see, kind of see right there. Playback is okay. Just plain A roll at half resolution, no problem. But, once you start maybe stacking some text, you can see the little dot became yellow already. It's dropping frames. I don't know how it looks for you guys, but for me it looks actually really stuttery. It's probably looks very bad for you guys as well. And when you bring in motion tracking and After Effects, this is terrible, just awful. This is a half resolution. If I drop it to a quarter resolution, it's still stuttering like crazy. Yeah. Let's start back over with the specs. So all the text listed out, dots yellow already. This is a quarter resolution at 4K. And it, it feels, it, it, it's editable, but from my point of view at least, you can notice kind of stutterings, lag, low frame rate. After Effects still, it looks terrible because it's quarter resolution only. And it's still stuttery, it's still laggy, and the dot's still yellow. And you can see that entire time, it was like, the VRM was completely pinned. Okay, so now we have a 4K timeline in Resolve to show the difference here. And as you can, I think, quite obviously see, I had a lot of this. This is the number representation video. Um, I had just had a lot of text, a lot of animated text, etc. And with the 950, you can see the frame rate right up there. So far, it's okay, but as the VRAM starts to fill up, you start to see more and more stuttering. See that? Now, now it's starting to have errors and then it starts to go back. Because it's just being completely overwhelmed, especially the VRAM. If we look here, VRAM usage, just adjust that exposure quickly, is completely pinned to the top. Now actually, while I was editing this video, I had to close it and restart it many, many times. Because now maybe once you've rendered it out or something, I don't know how Resolve works exactly for why it's doing a lot better now. But when I was editing this, pretty much every time I finished one of these chunks, I'd have to restart because the program would just completely quit and give me an error saying that I was out of VRAM. That is the biggest issue. Oh, it started a bit there. See, this isn't even it for all the layers. We See, it's down to just 20 frames per second because there's all those layers. Okay, here with the 1070 Ti. Again, full resolution, 1080p, A-roll playback, no problem. But, again, full resolution, 1080p, time-lapse playback. Has no issues. The... Dot did become yellow, but as you can see, there's no stuttering at all. It dropped a frame, yeah. But probably just one or two or just a small handful of frames. There's not a noticeable visual difference. Now, 4K timeline at half resolution looks fine here. Once we go to the layers, there's no issue at 4k half resolution down here still green still no problem the after effects motion tracking looks fine it's starting to drop some frames but overall it looks significantly better a lot less stuttering here it looks totally fine it was really just those parts where it dropped the frames <coughs> now this part with the 950 you remember it was stuttering even when it got back to just no motion tracking, but still technically in the After Effects composition, you can see right here, it's red. It was still stuttering as long as it was in that After Effects composition. Here it was only dropping frames, not really stuttering very much, just dropping frames. Here when it was actually actively motion tracking and moving around the text. You can even bump it up to full resolution, and it looks fine.
Look at that playback. Yes, it's yellow. That happens sometimes. The point is here that it's looking totally okay. It probably just dropped a frame and then caught right back up. See, transition, still no issues. So here in Resolve, let's here when it starts stacking up all that text, this is where it started to get really laggy for the 950. Again, you can see all those text layers. It's still totally fine. There's no issues. It start, okay, it starts to stutter a little bit, goes down a little bit, not as much as um, the 950, and it's not as bad, and it's using a lot less VRAM. So this one is not going to just quit on you because it ran out of VRAM. So now I hope you guys have an idea of how different calibers of GPUs affect video, different video editing workloads, whether it's amount, the amount of VRAM to be able to handle the workload without just crashing, or if it's playback performance, adding in different effects, motion tracking, lumetry, layers, etc. A beefier GPU leads to a smoother video editing experience, less crashing, less stuttering, etc. Now, how do you know which one you need? Really, it's all about the resolution of your videos and what you're going to be throwing at the GPU and how much it can really handle. That will determine what GPU you should get for video editing. So anyways, I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, drop a like, please. If you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to see more cool videos like this one. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.